Alrighty, you guys, I know there are a lot of nasty things going on in the world at the moment, but how about we just take a really deep breath and focus on the things that we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks, which is CS 2021, where we're going to be hopefully learning more about the RTX 3000 mobile lineup, Ryzen 5000 mobile CPUs, and of course, Intel's Tiger Lake and the RX 6000M. And I'm mostly hopeful that we're going to be learning more about the RX 6000M because we've learned quite a few things about the other things that I've just mentioned. And you can find uh, videos in this playlist that I've just mentioned about. And today we're going to start talking about the 5900H, which is a CPU that I've covered previously on my channel but so far I only had access to Geekbench results and this time I'm going to be showing you some CPU Z and some Cinebench R20 benchmark results and those are you know far better to judge how good a CPU is going to be rather than Geekbench and if you would like to know in CPU Z this CPU has managed to score over 620 points in single thread workloads and about 6,000 points in multi-thread scenarios this would obviously put it really close to the R um, to the Ryzen 30 3700X, which is a really good CPU if you haven't seen or watched any videos about that, but I would assume chances are you might have seen it, otherwise uh, check the video description for that. And in Cinebench R20 we have seen that it has been able to score about 590 points in single uh, core uh, scenarios and 5200 in multi-core. This would of course put it 17 to 22% ahead of the i7 10875H from Intel, horrible name by the way. But if you wanted more indication that this CPU is going to perform really well, then um, I don't know what to tell you other than we might also be seeing at some point the 5980X, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So um, yeah, also I should probably tell you that uh, the upcoming Ryzen 5000 mobile CPUs are not all going to be Zen 3, and that's going to be really confusing, but I have a video explaining that, otherwise just look at this picture that I'm showing you right now. So, um, I wanted to talk about some other things as well, and I'm going to um, probably tell you that this has been found in a laptop from MacRevo, if I remember the uh, name correctly, and I would assume that we're going to find similar specs in some laptops from Clevo, some uh, XMG, and of course Asus, MSI, and some other uh, big laptop manufacturers. Now, they haven't specified um, which GPU they were using, but they said that Cyberpunk 2077 has run really smoothly, so I would expect to have something like an RTX 3070 or 3080 Max-Q or Max-P, depending on the scenario, because it wouldn't really make sense to have a 5900H uh, with the RTX 3060. Now, with regards to the RTX 3070 and 3080, uh, I have a video talking about some benchmarks for these GPUs, and they have been both Max-Q models. However, I'll also have another video where I'm explaining why for you know some new buyers the RTX 3000 mobile is going to most probably be really confusing because if you are not really interested in technology or you know you just want a laptop to game on you don't really care about the specs you just read RTX 3070 or RTX 3080 and you think that is going to perform the same then go and watch that video because I explain a lot more things about that in that video. Now of course if I find more information about those things uh, make be sure that you're going to find it over here. Now more to this laptop uh, we have seen that it's going to have a 1440p panel which is really great. A lot of manufacturers are starting to do this and you're going to see a lot of those uh, panel types at CS 2021 or I should I say this resolution because I don't know exactly which panel type they are using and you can also expect that they are most probably all going to start at 90 hertz at least um, especially for gaming laptops like this one which might just have 120 or 144 hertz now we should also talk about um, some other things that have been happening in the you know, comment section of this channel. Um, I think that I just had a conversation with someone from Lenovo. It's, I don't know, it's a rumor, I guess, at the moment, because I'm uh, mostly reporting on leaks and rumors right now, so far. Um, either way, um, if someone from Lenovo is watching this video, then, uh, you know, contact me perhaps because I would like to review some of your laptops and we're going to be talking about some Lenovo laptops because they're going to be releasing uh, some that are going to be 5G capable and I know by the way guys the comments that I made yesterday or, or two days ago I can't remember when I shot that video they were just snarky comments and of course um, I've started doing YouTube for I don't know I think I started some, sometime at the end of September, beginning of October, and it's not like I gained like 1,200 subscribers, uh, 
humble brag yet again in the past month pretty much so I don't fully know my audience but what I've seen so far is that you are mostly gamers and you care about gaming laptops and not about 5G capable laptops and stuff like that and it's not to say that they don't have a place in the world you know but Obviously, I was just making those snarky comments to have a little bit of fun with my audience. I generally try to stick to the point as much as possible, but you know, from time to time things do get boring and I needed to um, take that off my heart as well. Now you know, either way, those laptops are going to be 5G capable, but of course they're going to, from my understanding, going to be selling somewhat of a subscription as well. And if you don't have access to 5G coverage, uh, which if you are from Germany like me, you probably don't because you're still stuck on dial-up or 4G. <laughs> um, and if that's the case, then you are going to be able to still use this uh, laptop in 4G mode. Um, now, of course, connectivity is not something that I think a lot of you are going to care about unless uh, you want to um, reply to those emails in a really speedy way, which is also part of their talking points in their press release, which I'm going to be linking in the video description down below. So um, I might not be able to say all of those things with a straight face, but it's still going to be really interesting because Lenovo is also going to be releasing some really cool laptops that are going to be for gamers. Now they're going to um, be releasing some laptops that are going to have Ryzen 5000 chips and it's not like they said that and they're also going to have some laptops that are going to feature the RTX 3000 mobile and it's not like they said that but what they said is that they are um, releasing some laptops with yet undisclosed CPUs and GPUs and um, I think that we both or we all know what we're talking about at the moment so um yeah those are going to be interesting they're going to have some models with 90 hertz and 1440p they're going to have others that are going to go up to 120 hertz and this kind of seems to be the trend that we're going to be seeing at ces 2021 um with these laptops and of course um they're going to have some models with 2.5k 2.8k if i remember correctly but what i'm mostly interested in is to see if this year we're somehow going to get um eGPU support on ryzen powered cpus and um I still kind of doubt it somehow, but on Intel models, we're going to be getting access to Thunderbolt 4. And I know that for the M1, we didn't have um, eGPU support, but hopefully we're going to have eGPU support for these Intel Tiger Lake Thunderbolt 4 capable laptops, because um, that is going to be really awesome. Now, um, if I'm ever going to make snarky comments, uh, it's just something that I uh, thought about right now. Um, you know, it, it comes from a, a good place. I know that there are really good engineers that are working on these products and most of the time it's just marketing people. And by the way, that's what I studied as well, uh, who get all the flack because of the, I don't know, press releases that are being uh, put out right now. Obviously, you're going to be able to find way more about uh, these laptops and the laptops from Dell, which I presented, I believe, in yesterday's video from LG, which we're going to be talking about next, also in the video description down below. So do make sure to check those links out as well. Now, talking about LG, because I just mentioned them, they are also going to be revamping the whole LG Gram lineup, which is pretty awesome. Um, I wouldn't also say that these are going to be for you, the gamers, because uh, if you know the LG Gram, they're really thin and light and you should just use them for other activities like, I don't know, um, sometimes editing videos because you're still going to get some nice CPUs and you're going to also get access to NVIDIA's MX450, which I know it's not uh, the most powerful GPU, it's not the Ryzen, it's not uh, RTX 3000 that you're looking at, but hey, it's still going to be really good and you can find some use cases for that as well. Now, um, back to Lenovo for a little second because I just remembered something I really know I should have made notes for this video. Um, they're also going to be releasing some tablets, but I guess most of you don't really care about that. And with regards to the 5G capable laptop, they're going to have um, a Snapdragon 8 CX slapped into there. So I guess you could look at it just like a really big smartphone. And um, you're going to be able to use it hands-free as well because they're going to have some Alexa capable features. So you're going to tell your laptop most probably like, um, hey, play some Snarky Poppy, which is a really nice band. And uh, I've been pretty snarky in the past couple of videos as well, I guess, and maybe in this one. But now let's go back to gaming laptops, which is also something that I covered in yesterday's community post. And if you haven't followed that one as well, I'm going to be telling you about what MSI has leaked. 
So what you're looking at right here is um, MSI Canada just showing us the RTX 3060 Max-Q laptops that are going to be releasing really soon at CES 2021. And if you ever thought that I'm the one who's leaking things, I'm not. Look, it's the companies there <laughs> that are doing all of those things. Now, of course, um, it's also good to talk about what are specs of this laptop is going to have because I don't really expect this one to be really high end, especially looking at the 1080p 144 hertz. However, look at that 45 NTSC coverage. Um, that's not going to be all that great and it might be a lot worse than what we've seen on some Asus Tough models because I know a lot of you guys have brought that up in the comments. So. Um, make with that information what you will because um, if you are still interested in getting a good laptop and you might have an external uh, monitor which can still do 120 or 140 hertz uh, and you don't really care about uh, how the laptop on your screen on how the screen on your laptop looks like sorry for that you're still going to be possibly interested in buying it, especially if it's going to be way cheaper than what the competition is going to offer. Of course, there are a ton of other things that you should care about whenever you're buying a laptop. And I guess you could go and watch um, the videos that I've made talking about that. So um, yeah, I don't really have a lot more things to discuss and I also need to start working on editing this video for you guys. So I thank you once again for watching and um, I should also point out that you might be interested in reading comments next time or video descriptions or I don't know, don't judge people based on one video that they made or one snarky comment that they've made because, you know, <laughs> I just started out. Things that are not necessarily going to be the way you wanted them to be are still going to happen. But I'm here to learn. 